Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. It is a Thursday, and as always on a Thursday, all of our guests, including Farhan, standing by. Brought to you by the Vancouver Giants, Connor Bedard and the Regina Pats. Visit the LEC Friday for a sold-out game against the Giants. If you missed out on tickets for Friday, a reminder, there is a second chance to see Connor at the LEC, uh, which is January 25th in the CHL Top Prospects game. Tickets for the Top Prospects game in every Vancouver Giants home game are available at VancouverGiants.com slash uh, tickets. You're, you're getting ripped in the Delaney's okay. Ripped. What Byron else is Langley new? inbox for not taking a stand on Bo Horvat. What do you mean not taking a stand? I said it's going to be hard to re-sign him. It's going to be almost impossible unless they move some uh, cap uh, bodies out of town. Okay. Uh, Farhan Lalji joining us now uh, from TSN. How are you? So, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We should be wearing that. Very good, my friend. But it's not a Canadian soccer jersey, though. That's the problem. It's okay. Well, the soccer jerseys are meant to be worn tighter. They're a little less flattering. Yeah, and, well, uh, I hear you. I, I, I hear you. I, you. You would know, right, guys? So yeah. uh, I've never owned a soccer jersey, but uh, in honor of Canada's soccer team, and uh, look, I know people are going to say, look, they lost. You shouldn't be celebrating. And, I'm, you know, I was just so thrilled to see them there. And so many of my friends that are there for TSN have just soaked it all in for us. And, and for me, I just – uh, I was impressed with their effort. I was impressed with just how they uh, conducted themselves. They were the better team in that game, even though they weren't the more high-scoring team. But I think if they play like that, they'll give Canadians a lot to celebrate. Yeah, what do you think that the Canada showed the soccer world yesterday, even though they lost? That they're not afraid, you know? And, and that's yeah. the big thing is that you can sit there and say in all the qualifying that, look, their, their numbers uh, show, they de the numbers demonstrate that they belong there. I mean, when you look at how they dominated – uh, the the section right in, in uh, Concacaf in order to advance. I mean, they were dominant on every level, and that alone should have told you that they belonged on the stage. But you don't really know because it's been so long, and they haven't been able to play the game at this level. And even though some of them have individually, you know, whether it's an Alfonso Davies at Bayern Munich or or others that are playing at the top levels collectively as a nation, they showed they weren't afraid. They attacked the number one, yeah. number two ranked team in the in the world, and that's a that's a heck of an accomplishment. Farhan, uh, hockey. Uh, Canucks come back uh, to beat the oh, Avalanche. Oh, I wore this because you like jerseys. You're a jersey guy. Oh, I, I like jersey And you guy. know, I'm just going to say, that is that is absolutely fabulous. That's, I know not everybody loves the black Canadian jerseys, but it, it works, especially on you. Uh, Canucks over the Avalanche, 4-3. <laughs> uh, Spencer yeah. Martin is, and his other numbers aren't mind-blowing, but wins and losses, 5-1-1. One, and one. Farhan, given the situation they're in, do they ride him in favor of Thatcher Demko right now? I wouldn't necessarily ride him like a number one, but I would alternate them, right? Like, don't treat Thatcher Demko like your number one because he's not playing like it, right? But you can't all of a sudden shelve him into, you know, playing, uh, you know, one out of every four games because ultimately you do know that he's your long-term starter and you've got to give him an opportunity to, to get his game back. And when you look at it two games ago, right, the first half of that game against Vegas, he looked great, and then all of a sudden you blink and, you know, back-to-back -back goals twice that uh, allowed the game to get away from him. And some of those goals were... You know, the, the goals that Canuck fans that haven't been thrilled with this year, the ones that just kind of squeeze through them or the shot up the middle where it gets intercepted and it turns into a goal the other way. So um, I, I think you just continue to do it, what Bruce Boudreaux has been doing of late, and that is just alternate because uh, one guy deserves to play more, one guy doesn't deserve to play as much. Well, we talked about Bo Horvat. Uh, it's going to be tough for hand to sign this guy. I mean, he's tied for the NHL leading goals, 16 uh, you know, you get the sense that the only way the Canucks can sign him is if they free up some money. And uh, now we're at Thanksgiving, USA, 20-game mark. I think you're going to see the phone start to pick up trade-wise all around the league. Yeah, well, it makes sense. And look, uh, as I said on, on our uh, athletic podcast earlier this week, if you gave me three players to build this franchise around, Bo Horvat would be on that list, uh, you know, along with, uh, a guy like Pedersen and Luke Shen. I mean, I, and I know that's really? weird to say. Because, yeah, just from a cultural standpoint, um, you know, they play the game the right way. And and I, and I look, they've got to move on from Luke Shen at the trade deadline because they're going to be out of it. And they've, they've got freedom to move him. They're not restricted. And he's going to be in demand. Not huge demand, but he will be in demand. And in order mm -hmm. to re-sign him, you'd have to probably pay too much there. But I just, I love the way those guys carry themselves and play the game and what you can count on. And, um, 
Rick's right, right? You know, Bo has earned the money he's demanding, right? And I know Rick. Rick wants everybody to get paid. God love him. But no, no. At, at the end of the day, the, there is a cat. Yes, you do. I love you for it. But you want everyone to get paid. Be honest. No, um, I never said that. He's going to get over $8 million. You watch. You watch. I know. Well, you, you, he is. And, and he's earned that, right? And in the beginning, when the Canucks paid JT Miller what they paid him, yeah. and, you know, Pat Morris was probably grandstanding a little bit when he referred to him as a 1C because he's not that. But from a scoring standpoint, he's delivering big time. Yeah. And he's earning what he's demanding. And the Canucks rolled the dice at the beginning of the year. And ultimately, they said that, you know, we'll be thrilled if he plays great. And, and Jim Rutherford has admitted that, yeah, it'll raise his trade value. So hopefully they can get enough for him. This group hasn't shown they can do that yet. But yeah. um, at the end of the day, good for Bo. Good for Bo. Because the organization made a decision to prioritize JT Miller. The organization was afraid to lose them both. And we thought in the summer that Bo was going to get done first. Instead, they decided to prioritize JT Miller, even though he's older. And, um, you know, personally, I think that was a mistake. But uh, – it. And they, they can't have both. They can't have both. They can't afford both. That's just the way it's got to be. Uh, you know who delivered was, was the CFL fans. Uh, the Great Cup yeah. numbers, $3.1 million. Late in the fourth quarter, it peaked at 4.5. 8.2 million people in Canada at some point checked out the Great Cup. And that, for all those CFL haters, it's still <laughs> the biggest uh, national party that we have in this country. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, and it, it was certainly a bounce back because last year the numbers weren't good coming out of COVID, and, and yeah. this year they were. There was a lot to get excited about. And did you see the rally down in Maple Leaf Square in Toronto today? Yeah, the pictures were great. The Argos. Yeah, place was packed. Yeah. Right, and I, I know there's not enough fans for them to have a parade, but nonetheless, I remember the last time they won the Grey Cup when Mark Tressman was the head coach and Ricky Ray was the quarterback, and they went down to Maple Leaf Square for a celebration that was like hundreds of people, like mm -hmm. hundreds, like maybe 300, 400. Uh, so to see this in a market that we thought was completely dead and you couldn't fix it was good, right? And it, it's something to build on. It's it's not a finality. It's not a, a big picture win, but it's something to build on. And hopefully uh, the fans in Toronto will, will buy a few more season tickets and get a bit more into this team because they obviously showed that uh, you know they were able to take on Goliath and, and punch him in the mouth and stay in the game. There were so many moments in that mm -hmm. game where you thought it was going to tip back, right? There was like a second and 11, and they had a sack. Uh, Toronto did to get off the field, but they took a penalty. And Winnipeg comes back, and 23-yard completion, and we're thinking, okay, this is where they're going to take over. Then there's the field Brandon goal Banks block. penalty yep. to make it second and 20, and you thought that's where they're going to take over. Then the field goal block, and Calaris throws an interception. There were so many moments that uh, it felt like Winnipeg's championship pedigree was going to take over, and the Argos said no, and it kept the game close, and it – led to so much theater in that final quarter that it was great to see that many people watched it. Um, it was a solid year for the CFL, wasn't it, Farhan? Have yeah. I got that right? I, I, I Honestly, like you look yeah. at the crowd here in Vancouver, uh, it looks like there's increased in, interest in, in Toronto. Montreal had a solid season. Just talking about the big cities, but would you describe it as solid? Yeah, I mean, it was solid, and the entertainment value went up, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the league recognized that uh, the entertainment value of the game a year ago was not good. And you knew some of that was going to happen coming out of a lost season. Mm. But they also weren't afraid to ask tough questions and look at other alternatives and make some tweaks to the rules. And when you added all of that together, uh, it, it was a, a season that had more come from behind victories, more scoring, more first downs. Uh, you know, all of it was just more entertaining football, despite the fact that the quarterback play was kind of average. They still found other ways uh, to get scoring up and um, – you know, I think it's a good thing going into 2022. Revenues bounced back a little bit as well. And then we saw the TV ratings at the end of the year and in the, into the Grey Cup. So uh, a lot to be excited about going into 2023. Even if you're here in BC, even if Nathan Rourke signs an NFL deal, there's still things to get excited about in this market. Looking good, Farhan, in Canadian colors. Thanks so much for this. Looking forward to Sunday, boys. You bet. Sunday against Croatia. Our thanks to Farhan Lalji, uh, TSN.